You're a very active pitch coach. When you advise startups on pitching, uh, what are the main things that you emphasize? What should they be saying to get the money? This is in my wheelhouse now, right? So as people who have been to my workshops know, I, I can stretch this into a three-hour interactive discussion without any problem at all. Um, when I'm in my workshops and when I'm doing any kind of a pitch review, there's about 30 things that I look for in, in pitches, but I'm just going to talk to about nine of them right now, and I'll do that very, very quickly. Sure. The first three are about what I call pitch strategy, and the first of these three is to understand that you are bridging art and science. Art is what you use to paint as good a picture as possible, considering that you don't have perfect information and you probably have significant gaps in your story, simple things like clients or revenue or talent, and sometimes you don't even have a product. So science, on the other hand, is how I characterize what investors do when listening to pitches. They may not have a score sheet in front of them, but they're definitely mentally checking off the topics that they need to hear, and they're comparing your story to others they've heard, and this is why I call my approach the artful science of pitching. Um, next, uh, this is number two, I guess, uh, understand that your product is a feature of your business. Don't try to sell the audience on just the product. They're not there to place an order. Instead, focus on convincing them that what you have, you have what it takes to transform an idea into a scalable business. And the third thing under um, pitch strategy is you need to accept that your only objective is to get to the next meeting. And I don't care if you're literally riding an elevator and making uh, a 15 second or 30 second pitch, or you're giving a 12 minute pitch, the usual objective is simply to get to the next meeting. Of course, if you're in a pitch competition, the objective is to win, but that's a unique scenario. Um, so that's the first three. The next four are about setting up for success. And the first is know your audience. It makes a big difference, based on what I said earlier about the differences between angels and VCs, you need to know whether or not your audience is angels or VCs or is it a mix. So that's one thing. The second thing is know what they expect from you. Uh, is it a short pitch? Is it a long pitch? Exactly how much time are they giving you? Is the time interactive or is it uninterrupted? Uh, is it with or without slides? Is there going to be Q&A or not? Uh, all of those things are very, very important, and they will determine the type of pitch you deliver. If you try to deliver a pitch that's designed for an uninterrupted time to an audience that's going to be interactive, you, you will have a very bad time in that, in that scenario. And in the course of delivering your pitch, you need to tell them what they need to know. So know the audience, know the venue, know the, uh, the amount of time you have, and tell them what they need to know. Uh, the next one is um, having multiple pitches ready at any time because you never know what audience or what uh, venue you're going to walk into and sometimes you think you're walking into a three minute scenario and suddenly you're told, hey, you've got 12 minutes to pitch, do you have a pitch that you can put up? And you want to say yes because you always want to take advantage of opportunities to pitch. Um, the last one in this section is prepare answers for Q&A in advance. The last thing you want to do is think about answers to really tough questions on the fly and on the lights. That's, that's just deadly for, for an investor. And then I've got the last two. They're, they're really at the core of, of success when you're pitching for funding. Um, practice, practice, practice. And we all hear that. That's absolutely true. Uh, anybody who's been out there pitching for funding will tell you they get better over time. So practice is important. And the last one is, it's not so much about pitching, but it's advice that I give to, uh, to every startup that's out there. Uh, try not to be a sole founder. Uh, find a co-founder. Because the work to get a startup off the ground requires at least two leaders. Focus on the business and one to enable the other to focus on the business. That second person needs to be prime on things like funding and anything else that can get in the first person's way. Excellent. And that, I think, did add up to nine. So.